And if people are, have, are struggling, as a physician specializing in people recovering from food addiction and, and recovering from illnesses, I want to give them the tools, the structure, and the help they need to make this recovery work and to make sure that they stick with it for the rest of their life and they don't fall back. It happens so much that people will go on to some healthy program or they'll go away you know, from a place a week or two and they'll come back and they'll just go back to their old diet and get laying their weight back again. They waste, if they didn't get to solving the obstacles in their life or what caused them to be a food addict to begin with, it's not going to stick. Poor self-esteem makes doing this more difficult. People look to get, when, you, when you're an addict and when you have poor self-esteem, you're looking for the approval of other people. You live for the approval of other people. When you feel good about yourself and what you're doing, when you feel that you're, when you're, the underlying structure of your life is based on fairness and consideration and being an, a, an asset to other people in need, and you feel good about yourself, you don't need to go after other people's approval. When a person's confronting you about your diet, why do you eat that way? Where do you get your protein? Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. You don't feel the need. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to make this person like you. You're not, you don't have to impress anybody. Your thought process is now revolving around how you can be useful to this person, how you can have the best effect on their life and possibly, maybe possibly, have some good effect on them, have goodwill for them. No longer, it's no longer about you. It's about them because you don't need to protect your own self. You feel good enough about your... You don't have a problem with your own ego, your own self-worth. You know what? Well, take care of yourself first. Put the oxygen mask on yourself. Be a role model. And then get the reward and satisfaction from being useful to others. It's not about arguing or protecting yourself or pleasing another person. It's being able to be the full you so you can get the full creativity out of your own abilities to be the best person you can be. Enable you to help other people better and have a life with better purpose and build your self-esteem with compassion. This person has been got the wrong information and they have food driving their behavior. It's not their fault that, they don't, that they're do, thinking the wrong way and they're not doing the best thing for their life. It's not their, not, you don't have to blame them personally. Right? You just have to think of how I can have the best effect on them and really think what's the best thing to have a better effect on their life. And maybe it's not going to help them. But just maybe because you were a good example and maybe because you expressed how much you love taking better care of your health and you, and you have, you know, and you're feeling for want them to be healthier too, whatever it was, maybe a year from now they'll think about that. Maybe you did have a remarkable influence on their life, and maybe you did help their life dramatically, but you know what? The minute you're afraid to hide who you, afraid to show who you are, the minute you want to get a, you want to blend in, and you want to eat, and you want to go to a, a food, a, a family gathering, or a party, and, and, and hide that you're eating differently, you're too ashamed of what you're doing, you're looking to please other people, and you, somebody's wanting you, and you don't want to, um, Offend a person by not eating what they made, or the minute you're trying to think of your mind is preoccupied with other people are thinking of you. The minute you do that, you've lost your opportunity to have goodwill for another person. It's the opportunity. It's not always going to happen. It's the opportunity to have to have an op to influence somebody positively. You want to have be a leader, and you want to have the mindset of a champion, and that takes practice and repetition and determination, and perseverance, and a correct attitude. And when you do that, this works really nicely, and it becomes fun and exciting. Remember, you don't get to be like a top champion, like athlete or tennis player or something, from, with a little bit of effort. It has to be many, many years of hard work. But here's the thing. What if this person where it gave 90% effort, or 90%, 95% effort. They'd get zero out of it. 90 or 9 to 5% effort gives you back nothing. Because all the money is in the last 5%. You get what I'm saying right now? If you have your foot in both worlds, 
keep dabbling in unhealthy foods where you're trying to eat healthy. You keep reestablishing those triggers that pull you into an addictive way of thinking that make this difficult to do it. Once you're fully committed, there's no more stress, no more decision making, no more the brain being forced to go back and forth, no more struggling with decisions. You've already fully decided and you're fully committed. Once you're fully committed and fully decided, there's no stress, zero stress. But then the miracles happen. Then the change happens. I used to teach ice skating. I used to tell my students, you're doing great, but you're not going to get anything out of this. Because doing it 90%, just, you know, you're not going to get an Olympic, you're not going to be in the Olympics, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're not gonna, you know, if you really want to you know, get something out of it, you've got to do it 100%. But it's ever so much here, but more important with food. I see so many people, I've been, as a physician specializing in nutritional medicine, I've been doing this more than 30 years now. And the biggest disappointment in my life is seeing the sick people that failed because they didn't follow through and do this. They knew about it. They learned about it. They got excited about it. And then they couldn't do it for some reason, which you're learning about. That's troubling to me. That was always troubling to me. And I've spent the last 20 years of my life trying to help people remove the obstacles to those changes so they can succeed, so we, can, so we don't have to leave people that want to change and want to get better, throw them out and not give them a chance. So the path to great health and true hunger, don't eat till you feel full or stuffed. You want to be hungry for the next meal. So how much can you eat at lunch? How much do you know how much to eat? Well, I'll tell you how much you eat at lunch. You want to eat the right amount so you get hungry again before you eat dinner. If you overeat at lunch, you're not going to get hungry for dinner. If you overeat at dinner, you're not going to be hungry in time for breakfast. Keep eating less so you can try to get hungry before the next meal. If you got through halfway through the afternoon and you're starving already before three or two or three hours before lunch, before dinner, then you didn't eat enough food. And if you're not losing a pound every three days, and if you're overweight and not losing a pound every day, every, if you're not losing a pound every three days or two pounds a week, then you're overeating. I can't assure that you're not going to overeat, but I know that if you eat this high nutrient diet style, you're going to be very comfortable eating the right amount of calories. And it makes it so it's no longer uncomfortable to eat the right amount of calories. It makes it possible for you to eat, eat the right amount with comfort. And you're not driven to try to force calories down your throat. So a nutritarian, the word nutritarian means you're recognizing that what you eat makes who you are and how you think and how you behave. It doesn't just determine your health. It determines how you think your ability to be a logical thinker and be influenced by and to be able to weigh information better and make better decisions. And you're not governed by your unrelenting need to be a people pleaser. You want to be useful to, the, to humanity and other people. But you don't want, but it's not about by getting more ego for yourself. It's not about how people see you. Your happiness is based on how you see them. Your happiness is based on how much you can emote, how much you can love, how much you can care for other people, how much you can care for the world around you, how much you can respect and appreciate reality. That's what your happiness is based on. Not trying to get people like you to get, to get more brownie points for yourself. People have it all mixed up. You follow me for a second? A nutritarian tries to eat foods that are good for their body. And we're very creative creating recipes that taste great but also are good for us. That's what you want to strive for. The prescription here is to eat a big salad every day because salads link to enhanced longevity. A nutritarian eats a large salad every day. Take out when you go home. A, you know, take out an index card and a marker and write on the index card the salad is the main dish and tape it right onto your refrigerator. The salad is the main dish and at least once a day have a big meal for your salad is the main dish. You know? And eat at least an ounce of raw nuts and seeds a day and possibly at least a half an ounce of nuts and seeds with that big salad to help maximize and facilitate the absorption of those anti-cancer phytonutrients. And have at least a half a cup of beans every day. Start with lower amounts if you get indigestion. You're not used to eating beans, but as you eat them regularly on an ongoing basis, your body gets better and better at it. 
have a big serving of cooked vegetables, including screen cooked greens every day, and have some mushrooms and onions every day too, and your mushrooms, are, and your mushrooms should be cooked. You want to eat all these foods every day to get the nutrients into your brain because we want the full portfolio of anti-cancer foods in our diet and we put the full portfolio of anti-cancer foods in the diet, that makes it most easy to lose weight and to control your appetite. And three fresh fruits a day, at least one should be berries. This lecture tonight, today, was derived from two books. The End of Dieting, talking about food addiction and overeating and, and emotional eating, and Fast Food Genocide, which talks more about the damage of fast food in underserved communities and how fast food leads to crime and, re and, and bigotry and drug addiction and reduces people's human potential and we're having a horrible, almost gen genocide happening to populations because we're not educating people on the importance of eating right, and we're not supplying them the ability to eat the right foods, and we're taking away their ability to, to achieve their human potential. So that was the book that we've talked about today as well.